Conservative host and Blaze Network contributor Mark Levin uh, weighed in on the increased hostilities with Iran, and he somehow managed to make the dumbest comments yet on this issue out of everybody. That's saying a lot because, you know, so many people have been saying wildly incomprehensible things. So listen to Mark Levin in all of his glory with his massively nasally voice tell you... <laughs> what he thinks would happen in, in a situation with all-out war with Iran. He wants to defend Americans, national security interests, and defend Americans. That's why he attacked uh, Soleimani uh, after they attacked our embassy. And he's been warning them and warning them and warning them. He did exactly what he needs to do. And in his statement, a day later, he specifically said, I'm not seeking war, I'm seeking peace. And he's moved additional troops in the area, additional bombers into the area, uh, F-35s into the area, more of them, not because he wants war, but because if they hit us, he wants to hit them back. That's not war, necessarily. The Iranians have been at war with us for, for over four decades. But if we wanted to go to war, we know how to go to war. George W. Bush showed us. You send 400,000 troops in, and you defeat Iraq in about 43 minutes. We can do the same with Iran. Maybe it would take 54 minutes. We've almost been in Iraq for 20 years. And this guy says, oh yeah, the war in Iraq, which we won in 43 minutes. Bro, what? <laughs> we spent $7 trillion in the war in Iraq. $7 trillion when you include the interest and out if you extrapolate out by 2053. To 2053, I should say. Seven trillion. Minimum 200,000 Iraqi civilians were killed. Thousands of U.S. soldiers were killed. We obliterated that country and created so many refugees as well. The only people who are celebrating are the military industrial complex and the oil companies who benefited from this. But that region of the world is destroyed as a direct result of what we did. And we are still there today. And he says, oh, we, it's easy. We defeated, uh, you know, Iraq in 43 minutes. And it might take 54, did he say, for Iran. How can anybody be so delusional? I mean, I guess what he's trying to say is, oh, to officially overthrow the government would take that amount of time. Well, it didn't. Okay, it wasn't even close in Iraq, but even if you grant him that point, that's not where it ends, because what happens next? As we learned in Iraq, it ain't pretty now, is it? And as we learned in Libya, oh, look at that, you overthrew the, you know, the big bad dictator, but what came next was a fail state, a terrorist haven, a, you know, a fractionalized country where you got warring factions in the streets, and you have open slave markets. So by all objective measures, it was better beforehand. So there is no context in which his comment makes sense. And I also love how he's pretending like, oh, no, that's not an act of war. Oh, sure, just assassinating a foreign general is not, is not an act of war. Again, the way these guys think is childish because they think the rules don't apply to us. And they think log logic is something we can escape. If the Iranian government killed General Petraeus in a drone strike, would we say that's an act of war? I'm pretty sure we would say it's an act of war. I'm pretty sure we would do that. But we get to do this to them and it's totally fine. And by the way, I haven't even brought up the economic warfare we've waged on them. A lot of people don't know this backstory, but when we pulled out of the Iran nuclear agreement, which again, we did, they didn't violate the deal, we pulled out of it, um, we started sanctioning them. One of the things we sanctioned was medicine. Iran sued us and said, you can't sanction medicine. This is for the civilian population. It's necessary. It went to the International Criminal Court, the top court at the UN. And you know what they said? The United States is in violation of international law and they must allow medicine in. So you know what the United States response was? To pull out of the International Criminal Court and scold them and continue to um, sanction the medicine. And it's so bad that I, I literally, there were tweets that I retweeted where the person was saying like, this is my grandma, and she passed away because she couldn't get her medicine. Not an act of war. U.S. isn't waging an act. What are you talking about? 
So in other words, you're just going to call the situation whatever you want to call it to fit your argument. That's what you're going to do. And it's crystal clear. That's exactly what you're going to do. So, I mean, this is, it's pathetic stuff, man. And make no mistake about it, Mark Levin, if Donald Trump didn't do what he did, Mark Levin would defend it. Donald Trump did what he did, Mark Levin is going to defend it. It has been insane to keep up with all those flip-flops from the, the ardent pro-Trump crowd. Some people voted for Trump because of the occasional non-interventionist talk he had on the campaign trail. Now, some of them have been consistent in that, and they've, you know, criticized Trump when he bombed Syria, they criticized Trump when he assassinated the general. Good for the consistent ones. There are plenty of them who just immediately, you know, sold their brain out to Donald Trump and said, go ahead, whatever you do, I'm going to defend it. And it, it's all over the place. Like, Tommy Lauren was immediately defending Trump violating U.S. law and international law and assassinating a general, the general who had just defeated ISIS and was on a peace mission at the time. Tommy Lauren instantly defended Trump. And then when Trump, just the other day, said, oh, okay, well, we're going we're gonna to do more sanctions, but Iran is stepping down, so we're going to back off. She goes, oh, that's brilliant. He's showing restraint. Wait, which is it? If Trump had come out in that speech and said, we're going to do a ground invasion, does anybody think Tommy Lauren would have been against it? No, she would have been like, oh, I agree with that too. So whether he kills a general or doesn't, she's going to defend it. Whether he does a ground invasion or doesn't, she's going to defend it. It's almost like you have no principles and no ideology and no beliefs at all, and you're just going wherever the hell your daddy takes you. And so I don't, tr don't respect or trust any of these ghouls, man. They're ridiculous. They're not, they, it's all a partisan game to them. Do you understand that? It's all a partisan game. Game. You go back and you look at secular talk clips. I criticized Obama rigorously when he violated a non-interventionist ideology, as he always did. I said, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with what he's doing here. I don't agree with the drone strike on a 16-year-old American citizen who happens to be the kid of a terrorist. He's not, you know, doing terrorism. You don't kill somebody because they had a bad father. Are you insane? So... I was more than happy to criticize when he violated what my beliefs are and what my ideological preferences are, but so many of these clowns just fall right in line. Petty little sycophantic authoritarians is the best way to describe them. And Mark Levin thinks he's smart with his nasally voice. He sounds kind of like Ted Cruz. Me, I'm Ted Cruz. Me. He sounds like that, but his whole thing is let me just do propaganda for Trump. And, you know, he's, he's a complete sycophant. And he probably has made a calculation that's going to help him in terms of his ratings and in terms of his, you know, his monetary value in the future. And it's just, it's the saddest thing ever to watch. To the point where he says things as silly as it takes 43 minutes or 54 minutes to win these wars. <sighs> oh my God. We all wish that we were only in Iraq for 43 minutes. We wish we were only in Afghanistan for 43 minutes. We wish... Because then I'll tell you what, we'd have trillions of dollars more here and maybe we could get an infrastructure deal or Medicare for all or free college or do any of the million things that we have to take care of here at home. 